They, they, they're saved, they're in church, but they are, that Bible really doesn't have a big effect on their life. What I mean by that effect, it, is a, it has affected their life. What do you mean by affected their life? They, they're different. They're not just different in church. They're not just, not, not just sitting in church. They are different. Their actions, their thoughts, their movements, their lives have been affected by the word of God. And Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Christ has died. Christ has given his life. And I have decided I don't want my old life anymore. And I want to crucify. And I want to be delivered from that. Is it too loud? Okay, turn me way down, Brother JR. I, I, I know you got me going. Uh, but listen to me. And, and just make sure they can hear us online. Everybody's going to be able to hear me just fine tonight. And, and so he says, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live... So he, he's not dead, he's living. He, he's alive. He said, nevertheless, I, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And let's say that's what the Christian life is supposed to be like. That people, when they get saved, when they give their life to the Lord, and God moves in and changes them, it's a real change. It ain't a new dress code. It ain't a new uh, Sunday hour where you're here. It's where God has done something. And, and I want that life. Uh, I was listening to our Tory book today on the airplane, and, and I want the crucified life. I, I want to have a life that when someone meets me, they would say, the Bible has affected that man's life. And so as I thought about this verse tonight, I think about Paul saying, I'm crucified with Christ. And I would think to ourselves tonight to ask ourselves some questions. Are you crucified with Christ? Now, the, the answer to that is, is simple. Because you either are or you're the opposite of that. You are either crucified with Christ. I'm not talking about being saved tonight. I hope that everybody is saved. I hope you are. And if you're not, you need to get saved. But I'm talking about you're either crucified with Christ or you're standing with the world. It is, it is black and it is white. It is, it is very simple. And, and so I got to thinking about that as I, as I pondered this verse today in my mind. And, and then he didn't speak about this verse in the book, but, but I began to think about that. And Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I. It isn't me anymore. It's God. And so we, we either stand with Christ or we stand with the world. We either live for God or we live for ourselves or the world. We either, we either make decisions that are godly or we make decisions that are ungodly. Now, now listen, I feel like the Lord's been doing something here at our church. And I just preached a revival at their church, and I really just preached the last section of what we've been doing in our church. Because I thought, man, this is just, this is just what the, the world needs. We need to come out from among them. We need to get filled with the Holy Ghost. We need to give up our lives and get God's life. And so tonight, you got to ask yourself, listen to me, this is what church is for. This is what the preaching's for, to bring us to a decision to say, am I or ain't or am I not? Am I or am I not? And listen to me, it isn't us doing it. It's us surrendering to God and saying, you know, Lord, I just give up. I'm just, I just want you now. I'm not going to focus on me. I'm just going to focus on you. Now listen to me, I'm not talking about soul winning. I'm not talking about church attendance. I'm not talking about singing. I'm not talking about all the things that we do or are supposed to do to the Lord. I'm telling, listen, God, I'll give up. I, I would really, really like to have what you have for me. Uh, they sang that song tonight, and I, and, I, and I forgot the words of it, but it was rewriting my destiny. 
This is also, I want you to listen to this. Uh, Sunday, last night at the revival, there was a man that came Sunday morning, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night. His name was Casey. Has a wife and three boys. And they got saved about a year and a half ago. Now, they normally would come on just Sunday mornings. And if you know your pastor, I'm against just coming on Sunday mornings. It's not enough, man. We've got to be in church hearing the word of God and growing. And, and, and so I, I said that to the church that morning. I said, listen to me, folks. I don't know what you're intent on being and doing this week, but you need to be in church every single night here. This is your church. This is God's church. And if you're a member of this church, you need to be here. So, Casey, they live an hour away. And he has a has his own business, a car, uh, a, a tire shop, and a mechanic shop, and, and they're busy during the day. Well, after Sunday morning, he he came to me. He goes, "I'll be back tonight." And I thought that's great. I didn't know he. And then and when he came back, the preacher said, "You know, they they're good folks. They they don't come all the time on Sunday nights and stuff." And so then he came on Monday night. But then they began to just kind of hang out with us after the service was over, and, and we didn't get over real early or anything, not, not because of me, but, well, kind of because of me. And then they came Tuesday night, and then Brother Brucci's like, Brother Burton, this is awesome, man. I'm really, I said, Brother Brucci, that family's the key to your church right here, man. They're a young family. They got a lot of older folks, and they were all there. It was great. He says the most attended services they've ever had in years at the church. And, and God blew in, and so last night, Brother Casey stayed, and he says, you're not going to believe this, but Saturday, I was looking at my security cameras at my place, and there was this homeless guy going through the trash, and, and he was just throwing stuff everywhere. He said, Brother Burton, I know this isn't right, and I think, you know, he, he, he thinks I'm like, like, you know, when you don't know me, you think, man, he, maybe he's the man of God, or so he's kind of apologizing to me, he goes, I know this isn't the right thing, but... Man, I was going over there with my baseball bat, and I was tired of him messing my stuff up. And I was gonna, I was gonna get him. He goes, I, I just, I just, I was just tired of it. This is before the revival started, and and so when he gets there, he'd already called the police. When he gets there, the police are there already, and they're questioning the guy. And then they frisk the guy, and he's got a big knife on the side of his leg. Turns out the guy had warrants. They end up taking the guy to jail. He goes, he goes, Brother Burton, if, if I would have got there before the police, there's no telling what might have happened. Right. He had a big knife. All he had was a bat. And he goes, and, and plus, Brother Burton, it's, why would I care about trash? It's not, it wasn't even worth it. And I was going there. He goes, and then I would have missed this. The whole revival, he's like, I would have missed this. And I was thinking about rewriting my destiny and, and the choices we make. Every choice you made today had a great effect on your life. But, but so let's go back to when we maybe weren't saved or we got saved and, and, and maybe we came. I, I remember Miss Tania coming to our revival at that time. And, and imagine Miss Jessica not working there with Tania. Uh, I mean, you can look at so many things and her never saying anything to you and, or, or just, you know, the kids never come in here and, and, and then, and then you and all the decisions that, and, and then us not starting a Bible study over there and, 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 and Rel, us not knocking over by your house and, and Miss Linda, uh, us not getting this building where you had already been close to Miss McDowell and, and what did Jesse, uh, all the things that God has done and man, he rewrote our destiny. And the choices that we make now will determine if we're going to be able to make it to the revival. Like, like, and I'm speaking kind of, you know, an example. He said, if I would have went there, I wouldn't have been here. Man, he had his kids in church every night. They, they were, he, the one boy, he's, he's 17 years old, and I went up to him. He's a very quiet boy, and his name was Chaz. And he says, uh, he just was standing next to me after the service, but he wasn't talking. And it was kind of awkward. I'm trying my best to say, hey, buddy, how you doing, man? How's school? And, you know, anything I could think of to get me, he wasn't talking. He said, good, good. And then all of a sudden he goes, they have a Christian club at my school from athletes after school. I'm, gonna, I'm thinking about joining it. That's what he said after that revival. He's 17 years old. He said, I'm thinking about joining it. And I said, Chaz, I think that would be a great thing, man. He goes, I think it will too. 
And then his little brother walked up. His little brother's name is, uh, oh, man, one of the boys' name was Kale. How about that? Uh, and Colt. His name was Colt. And he's 11, and, and, and uh, I didn't know he was 11. I said, Colt, when are you going to preach your first message? He said, I'll probably when I'm about 15 or 16. Just, just got into church. And I said, well, my son, I think he preached his first one at 10 or 11. Hey, I said, how old are you? He goes, I'm 11. I go, Colt, man, maybe you ought to pray about that. And, and, then, and then Casey came over. And, and, and listen, what's happening to them is so unbelievable. And, man, I really, I really look back on what happened to all of us at certain times. And we were, we were, we were, we were all out full force. Everybody in this room that I know, there's been a time that now you're pushing for the you were pushing forward. I, I, I think about Kimberly is in that time right now of her life. She's coming. And, and then I, of course we know everybody. I know everybody in here. And 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 and, and so what is what is Casey doing? Well, right now Casey's making the decision that he's going to be crucified with Christ. Now I said they have guess what they have Saturday? They have Super Saturday this Saturday. And I said, well, that's, that's interesting. You guys got super excited. We're having it too. I said, everybody in here ought to be out of that. And, and he says, they don't show up a lot of them. He wasn't talking bad about it. He had told me later on, man, that, you know, sometimes people come, sometimes people don't. But I, I didn't think about all that. I just said, everybody ought to be there. Casey came up to him and said, you know, I think I probably need to be here Saturday. And I said, oh, yeah, Casey, you got, you got, to, you got to bring your whole family, man. I said, family day, is, is your family day Saturday? He goes, yeah. I said, oh, man, what a, what a great way to start it off an hour just out telling people about Jesus. You see, they're right there, and it's going to be awesome. But they'll have to be crucified with Christ. And then they'll have to realize that it, ain't, it, it can't be them. Folks, that's why we often hit dead ends. That's why a lot of Christians are in a dead end in their Christian life. And still in church, still tithing, I mean, knocking doors. But listen to me, that doesn't, that is, a, that is, what, that is something you do. That is not your walk with the Lord, and that is not your total influence. Of, uh, that, that, that is not being filled with the Spirit. That is, that is just something you can do without God. And so Paul said, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And that's the key right there. Letting Christ be the one that lives in you. You know, we, we, we see, you live, I'm living my best life. You, you've heard that before. Uh, well, living our best life would be letting God live his best life in me. And, and so if I'm crucified with him and, and he's in, in me, then my, dis, dis, my, my decisions are, so, so we, have, we have a line drawn down the middle, crucified with Christ, standing with the world. If I'm crucified with Christ, I'm going to make all these decisions. But I have to be filled with God because he has to live in me. And, and what I mean by living in me is not just salvation. Folks, wouldn't it be great if salvation did the trick? I mean, it did do the trick for a little bit, though. Uh, that guy that got saved, his name was uh, Chris. And I told the whole church, I said, now listen, Chris can make it on Sunday morning and Sunday, Sunday night and Wednesdays. It's going to keep him going for, for a little bit. I said, but the rest of you, no, no, you're going to have to get a relationship with the Lord. And you're going to have to make a decision that you're either going to be crucified with Christ or you're going to stand with the world. It's a, it's a tough decision because we're made of flesh. And I'm not knocking you, and I'm not saying it's easy, and I'm not saying I'm the best at it. I'm saying this tonight, that the Bible has little or no effect on the average Christian. They know it. They read it, and they get it, and they hear it, and they, when, it's, when it speaks to us here, isn't it great when God speaks to us? It's great. Yeah. But having an effect here and having an effect out there is two different things. And so God wants us to be like him, to seek those things that are above or seek those things that have no meaning. Every person we see, we ought to see him as a lost and dying soul. 
You, you know, I almost did it today, man. I, I didn't have quite enough nerve. I was about to. I got off the plane. I'm standing in St. Louis, Missouri at the halfway mark. And, and man, there's a ton of people walking by. And I almost grabbed my, I, I got about, a, about probably 100 tracks in my bag. And I thought, I'm going to get those tracks out. And then I'm just going to start act like I'm out on the street and start passing them out, everybody. And I didn't, but I, I really wish I would have. And I believe I will from here on out, just on purpose. Just, and, and some people ain't going to like it. But imagine when one person gets it and they say, you know, that's good. Uh, uh, when, I, when I gave the, when I said it on the St. Louis trip, when I got to St. Louis, I said, I just want to thank God for saving me. And I can tell anybody on this plane how to get saved. If you need to know, I can show you. And the little, the, there's a whole couple behind me, and they're like, hey, man. And I was like, oh, man, it's so good that they're happy. And she goes, I'm getting ready to go to Israel. And I thought, wow. And, and we, we talked, and, and, and everybody's happy. And listen, man, that, you know how good it feels to tell people about the Lord? I feel really good about myself when I'm, when I'm letting God, you know, I wish I would have done that. And I'm, I'm telling you, you know, I'm just like anybody else. I wish I would have did it in the airport. I, I should have done it, man. I really wanted to. Uh, seek these things that are above. Crucify with Christ, seek the things that are above. Stand with the world, seek the things that are temporary. Seek God, seek self. Now, I'm not knocking you tonight. I'm telling you, I'm going to tell you the reason why we don't in just a second. Because he's risen, I need to live a life like I've been risen. The, the Bible says that we are in heaven right now. That we are citizens of heaven right now. We, ain't, we, we the Bible says it, and I'm, I'm, I don't want to get, look for it, but the book of Ephesians says it's, it's like it's like we're there right now. It, it's automatic. We're just passing through. I, I want you to think about this. Person from New York City. Uh, maybe a, a person on Wall Street that has everything made for them. You know, they have, they have a doorman and someone cleans their house. They don't ever get their hands dirty. They don't ever, they don't ever uh, uh, have to put gas in their car. They, they just, someone takes care of their finances, all that. You picture that person. They go to Arkansas and now they're on a farm. And when they walk outside to that farm, here's what they're going to do. And they're gonna they're gonna step very carefully and and maybe there's 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 cow patties on the farm. You don't know what a cow patty is. So it's poo poo. And, and so when they see that, they're gonna they're gonna and their hands might be out like this. They're gonna be very careful. And 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 maybe my mom, my dad grew up, he didn't have running water in his house. Did you have running water in your house, mom? They, they had outhouses. Growing up, they wasn't, they wasn't, you went outside and used the bathroom. And, and so maybe that guy from New York, there's an outhouse. Now, can you picture somebody like that, you know, maybe taking a, 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 their, their hanky out and they're going to open that door to that outhouse. And then, man, I don't know if you've ever been in one, but it ain't pleasant. Yeah. <laughs> and go in there and, and boy, this guy, no choice, he got to use the bathroom. They don't know they could use it outside like a small redneck would. If I was out in the country, I wouldn't go in the outhouse. So they're going to get in there, and, man, they're not going to sit down. They're not going to touch nothing. They're not, it's going to be nasty. You know why? Because that person's from New York City, and they are not from Arkansas. You know, when you get crucified with Christ, that's the way we're to live here. We're not to touch anything. We're to be very careful where we walk at. We don't want to get the filth of the world on us. We don't want, I don't want to have nothing to do with it. Listen to me, folks. This is, this is, this is, this is, it. we've had some good messages. And I believe God's working. But have you crossed over and said, man, that's it. I just want Christ. Uh, I, the person from New York, man, they're going to go, they're just going to be like, what in the world? And that's the way our, our, our life should be here on this earth. We're just temporarily, past. we're not from here. Well, this is not where we are from. This is not our home. Christ gave himself to us. 
the world has no time for us. Christ says, let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. The world says, we believe this. Christ says, give me everything you got. We're not talking about money, not talking about offerings, not talking about anything, talking about inside of you. And the world says, give me everything you got. And so we make those decisions, and the only way to be crucified with Christ is to live on this side. <clears throat> I really do want to be like this. I was, I was listening to this, uh, this book today, and this preacher said this. He said, um, every time I leave my house, I pray, God, please go with me. Every time I drink a glass of water, I thank God for that water. Thank you for this water, Lord. Every time he woke up, every time he went to bed, everything he did, he prayed and he thanked God. And, and I thought, Lord, I would really like that. Well, Brother Burton, how do we get that? We've got to be crucified with Christ. I can thank God or I can do it by myself. I can live a risen life or I can live the life that the world lives. The world should be awkward to us. My kids, are my kids in here? Sometimes Kayla and Grace will say, Daddy, I don't, I don't really, I don't feel like anybody likes me. I don't really fit in with them. Certain, cer certain, you know, it, 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 different things. And, it, and, and, and I said, honey, we're all different. I said, you're just, you're just, we, we have differences. And what other people like, you may not like. And what you like, they may not like. I'm not saying anything negative about anybody. I'm saying it's, when, when you get around somebody that, you know, if you came up to me and said, start talking about Xbox, now, I can fake it enough, but yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I played this week with those kids who played Nintendo. We played Tech Mobile, Nintendo, where there's four plays, and it's, it's the terrible graphics. And I'd say, yeah, but I used to play that in college. We played Tech Mobile. And... And I can get along with, I can really talk to anybody and they can tell me something, I can get in on it. But sometimes people can't relate to what another person's going through and it's awkward. And, and so the world ought to be awkward to us. It ought to become where we're not comfortable with it. And, and if you are comfortable, you need to pray, Lord, why am I comfortable with it? And the answer will be that you're not crucified with Christ. He's not living in you. You're saved, but he's not living his best life through you. He says, nevertheless I live, yet not I, Christ liveth in me. Uh, in the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Whose faith is, is Paul living? Paul's living Christ's faith. So to live Christ's faith, we have to be full of Christ. And it's not, it's, it's not rocket science. Uh, the Bible says in Colossians, says our life is hid with Christ. Our life is hid with Christ. And, and that is, see, see, listen to me. I'm, I'm telling you, man, I'm just as much anybody else in this room. I, I have a problem because I can fit in very, very easily. But I don't want to anymore. I, I, I'm not going to, I don't want to judge people, but I, I, don't, I, want, I want to have an awkwardness to the world, and I want to just be what God wants all the time. I wish I would have done it in that airport, and, 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 and just because it will help me, not to try to make you think of anything, but I will, by the, by the grace of God, do it the next time, and I think it'll be fun. <laughs> and, and my family might be with me, and I'm going to make them do it too. They'll be like, Dad, but, but we're just going to do it. 
Because our life is hid with Christ. Colossians 3, 4 says the hope of the church is Christ. Uh, uh, Psalm 34, 10, David said that the person that walks with God lacks no good thing. We lack nothing. David thirsted like a deer for the Lord. His, he said his soul waited upon God. His soul waited upon God. He wanted the Lord. Early will I seek thee. My soul followeth hard after thee. Just thought about those verses today. See, here's the problem with the church today. Not this church, the church in general, Okay. And, and, I, and I got this right from that book. What is happening now in this time is we are taught, now listen to it very carefully. We're taught to believe in him and accept him and seek him no more. We're taught to believe in him. We're taught to accept him and then to seek him no more. And that's where most Christians are, Brother Jesse, including Brother Burton. But God, God's whole plan was we were going we're gonna, to we're gonna be taught about him, to seek him, and then we're going to accept him, and then we're going to let him have the keys to the car, and we're going to get in the trunk, and we're going to let him be the pilot and go wherever he wants to go. That is the crucified Christ. That is me saying I'm dead. Paul said he had to die daily. And, and listen to me, nobody, no losers in here tonight. Man, don't believe the devil. We just have to get filled with Christ. And it's not, not, not hard. We don't have to pray any prayers that we can't say. Nobody has to be articulate. And nobody has to have a college degree or anything like that. They didn't learn any of this in college. Examine the average Christian and find out that the Bible has little or no effect on their lives. Paul said he wanted to be apprehended for that which he was apprehended for. It means this. I want to do what God chose, wanted to do with me. You see, God chose to have a big impact on your life and to do something incredible. And the only way to do that is to be crucified with him. And that's a decision that can be made tonight. That's a decision you can walk away without the guilt. There is therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. It means there's no guilt. If you're feeling guilty, that's the devil and it's a liar. Holy Spirit tells us something we can, we can leave here different. How do we do that? We appropriate the Word of God to our life. Every bit of it. Every bit of it. So, man, that's hard. Well, I, I have to agree, because, but it's, only, it's not hard because of the world. It's not hard because of the devil. It's only hard because of me. But if I can, if, if I, listen, we can really have revival in this place. If we really, and, and I'm talking, held each other's feet to the fire, accountable. Hey, what'd you read today? And if they didn't read, we don't like, you dummy, why didn't you read? No, no. Hey, man, let's make sure. Let's, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for you. And, and listen, being apprehended for what God apprehended us for is what Paul said or something like that. He says, walk in the light. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. Now listen to me, I'm almost done. If we, if we walk in the light, the light has no effect on you unless you walk in it. Walking is my life. He went to my going for a walk. It's our, our life, the Christian walk. We talked about that. How do we walk? Walk with lowliness. And, and the light has no effect on a person unless they're in it. I'm crucified with Christ. And listen to me, it's individual. It has no effect. You are not affected by my Christian walk. You, you have your own decision to make. 
So well, you're the pastor. Yeah, but if I was a really good pastor, you would depend upon me and not be able to have a good walk with Christ. So that gives me a la- out right there. I, I, I'm just doing the best I can. And I do believe I'm doing the best I can. And, and, and so, but look, it, it, we have to walk by ourselves. And if we do that, hey, listen, the woman that had the, the issue of blood, they, she, she pressed towards him by herself to touch the garment, and she was healed. You know what? The doctors had given up on her, but listen to me. She gave up on everybody at that point. She didn't need anybody to go with her. She says, I'm going to touch him. I am going to touch him, and he's going to be the end. Listen, if we would just press towards him right now and touch him, and then wake up and touch him, and, and write it on your hand. Kara writes stuff on her hand so she doesn't forget. Uh, make your phone remind you. Hey, the, the, we, we, we're all, we got a lot going on in this life, and, and we, we can get off base very quickly. One thing can happen. It can change the Hey, I'm crucified with Christ by myself, he and me only. Listen to me. He says if you walk in the light, we can't, we can't walk in any natural light. Natural light's not going to do it. It's got to be God's light. And that's where we're at. We, 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 if I, if that's where I'm at. If I don't get God in on it, then it's just religion. And I got to do it alone. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Hey, how, what do we do, brother? What's crucified with Christ? Man, I don't want me. I want you. And listen to me. You've heard this from before from me all through 13 years. If there's any bit of you in you, you cannot be filled with Christ. The filling of the Holy Spirit is something where God wants all of it because, hey, listen, you'll do pretty good with half. That's our problem, man. If I give them half, I'm still doing a lot better than most people, and I'm having a pretty good life with half. But God wants it all. And we give it all. Listen to me. The, the song says, and, and I, I can't remember what it says, but it, it, it makes this, this, this notion that everything will just be nothing if we just give our life to the Lord. What's that song? Do you know what I'm talking about? No, it, 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 it just, it says, the, the, what's that? Yes. Yeah, the, the, everything in life will mean will, will be meaningless to us if we give it to the Lord. And so, how do we do that? You got to empty. Hey, listen, you can hold on to part of it and say, "Well, I'm giving them everything but this, everything but my my." The, 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 I, I ain't got time to start listing out things that I think we all struggle with. Holy Spirit can do that, but I've gotten down, brother. Just say, "God, I want all of you," and then He'll say. What about this one, Burton? I don't know. Lord, you know my heart. You know I'm trying. And I'm I'm working on that one. And at that moment, God says, can't feel you, but I'm still merciful and I'm still good and I can still bless a little bit that you're you're still, you know, he's not trying to kill me. Hey, tonight, we just got to get to the altar. I like that woman who pressed all by herself, gave up. She said, hey, nobody else is coming. I'm just going to go get him. Hey, you ought to be thinking, nobody else is coming. I'm just going to go get him. He said, well, I got this and this at home and this at home. Listen, I live with people too. And, and nobody in my family is perfect or even close to perfect. We are all worldly often. And when one's doing good, it seems like the other four ain't. And it gets so hard for the one. And sometimes I'm the one and sometimes I'm the other four. You know what that guy Casey said? He said he went on vacation recently. This is awesome. He, they're in, uh, they're in, I think they're in Mexico or something. And, and there, he's sitting at the table eating breakfast, and his 17-year-old boy comes out and sits down with his Bible and opens it up. He goes, Brother Burton, I thought, hey, my kid has got the Bible, and I, I didn't even bring my Bible on vacation. He goes, that was convicting, Brother Burton. And I'm like, man, that's awesome. That's awesome, Brother Casey. That's, that's unbelievable, man. And 
That same boy wants to join the Christian. Hey, listen to me. What his daddy does will determine where those boys probably will go. Now, it doesn't mean it. Uh, I think about Miss Emily and Miss Kesley. Uh, mom, mom stopped coming to church years ago. They just kept pressing on. And so it's not, not 100%, but man. So, but it, it is about you, and it's about Casey's relationship. And, and but I, he's got a little Spanish wife, and, 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 and you know, and, and I'm thinking, man, well, when they weren't saved, he told me they, what they, 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 they weren't bragging about, but he said, you know, we, we sometimes, I don't know how we got home. And I said, but Casey, and the good God didn't just pull the plug on us. I, I drove home like this with, with one eye covered sometimes. I couldn't see double. I was seeing double. And, 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 and now, man, it's just a decision. And so Casey's right there. I said, Brother Brucci, he's the key, man. I'd push up on him. I, w- I wouldn't pastor them like an Oklahoma pastor. I passed him like a New Testament Bible pastor. And what do you mean by the Oklahoma pastor? Well, sometimes guys don't want to tell people stuff, man, because they're afraid they might leave. I said, but Casey, I'd rather tell them and them leave than me not tell them and them stay the way they are because I'll stand, not Casey, Brother Bruce, I'll stand before the Lord one day and God will say, you were afraid and you didn't say it. So tonight, so much for the short message. Let's get to the altar. Fill yourself with the Spirit. Empty yourself of yourself and say, God, I need you. Would you help me? Lord, that's a real prayer, and God can do that. He wants to do that. He wants to do it. All you teenagers, you ought to get to the altar. You ought to say, man, I ain't following the crowd. I am going to be my own man, my own woman, and I'm going to live for the Lord because the blessings will be there. You sure, you you may have to step away from some stuff down here, but it will be much worth it when you take that step, when you graduate college or whatever it is, and you're living a life with your family because none of the other teenagers matter at that moment what you did here. Only matters what you do with Christ. I don't know any other way to, to say what I said tonight, but just how we said it. I'm crucified with Christ, and I, I just want Christ. Just Him and Him alone. You can make a way. Everybody in this room can do it. If you're not saved in here, you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ is your personal Savior, let me pray for you. Would you slip your hand up right now and say, Preacher, pray for me. I do not know for sure that Jesus is my Savior. Here's my hand. Anybody? Hey, Christ is worth it. You pray for me. Pray for your preacher. He needs to be filled with the Spirit of God. house and coming out to preach and going back to the house to be a good Christian but that's not where God has me living God gives me a great family, great church family lost people all around me and God's spirit to direct me, God says let me fill you Burton be filled with the spirit of God I tell you what, it will make a difference. The world will become strangely awkward to you. You will not be comfortable when you're a citizen of heaven with what the citizens of this world are doing. Doesn't mean we turn our back on them, we win them to Christ. But we do not let them affect us like we do. Most people are more affected by TV the job, their families, Hollywood, the news, than they ever have been affected by the Bible. God wants it all. 
man, just, just what if you did pray tonight? Lord, I want to see you use me this weekend. And God really prayed up. And Lord, I want you to fill me. Help me, Lord. I, I got some really good short books on Kindle and different things about, and I can teach you it too, but about being filled with the Spirit. It's not, it's just deciding I don't want me and I want you. It isn't praying louder. It isn't trying harder. It's just giving up and saying, Lord, I just want you. Father, we love you, Lord. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for a good night, church. Help us as we go our ways to ponder the decisions. Help us to uh, talk them through with our loved ones. Lord, help us to have a good prayer tonight before we go to bed with our family or with ourselves. We're never alone. You're always there. Lord, help us to not get intimidated because we don't understand every word we read in the Bible. And sometimes it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Lord, help us to read the things that do make sense. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, Romans. Lord, I, help us to just empty ourselves of us and be filled with you. And if, if we allow that, Lord, there's really no telling what, what is in store for our lives. And because of the great relationship that we can have with you, be determined by you, be led by you, and see it like you see it. What a great life. And I know that is attainable. I know it's attainable even now, Lord. Help us to make the right decisions. Help us to get right when we're wrong. Help us to confess our sins faithfully and, and constantly. And help us to be filled with you and not ourselves and to get rid of our lives tonight. I pray that you do it, Lord. And I pray that you'd help me to do it. Pray for my family. I wish they would have been here tonight. And I pray that you'd help them in Jesus' name. Amen.